Hey friends, this is a warning. I'm about to show a video that's about six minutes and 20 seconds of a couple of spiders walking around. And I know some people freak out about spiders. So just saying, stop now if spiders make you cry. Isn't he just adorable? So this is a newly hatched house spider that I've kept in the lab. Um, I've lately been tinkering with raising spiders and seeing if I can do anything interesting with them in developmental biology. And so far they're pretty easy. And look at that. Isn't that, isn't that just so cute to see? Anyway, so these spiders, I don't know much about them. Uh, like I said, I'm collecting them around my house. Uh, the, all I know is this is definitely a spider from the family Theridiidae. Uh, it's one of a number of different species that are present in this family. I don't know yet because I haven't carried out a full classification of them yet. Uh, it could be Parasteatoda. It could be Steatoda. There's several options out there. Um, I've collected a number of them and I'm just raising them. And once they get, you know, once they start reproducing and once I get some adults, I can start poking around and peeking at their genitalia and figuring out exactly what species they are. Um, if I do find Parasteatoda, that's, that's the one I'd like to work with the most. Anyway, so I'm tinkering with them. They're a little different than zebrafish. Zebrafish are so much, in some ways, are so much more convenient because uh, they're fish, right? I have anesthetics for them. I can knock them out. What we generally do with fish embryos is we embed them in gelatin or auger so that they don't go anywhere. And uh, spiders, I don't think that would work. As you can see, this little guy is just scampering all over the place, making it really hard to track and follow him. Uh, the spiders are also a little smaller than zebrafish. So a zebrafish embryo is going to be, or larva, is going to be about three millimeters long. So this is, this is an itty bitty little thing walking around. But itty bitty is kind of an advantage if you're trying to look at cellular processes. Now you may notice uh, you're getting a little bit of motion sickness. Uh, that's because I haven't figured everything out. And right now all I'm doing is I'm putting it on the scope. I'm aiming the scope and the camera at him. And with one hand I'm controlling the focus to try and keep him in the plane of view. And with the other hand I'm shifting the petri dish he's in. Trying to track him as he moves. And it takes a little bit of coordination I've discovered. Which I don't entirely have. Another feature of spiders that zebrafish don't have is spiders spin webs. Even at this freshly hatched stage, this guy is leaving webs all over the place. Uh, so I try to use a soft brush to pick them up and move them around. And I discovered that they stick to the brush. And you may pick one up and put it in the dish to look, look at it. And then you move the brush away and you discover that it has left a little rope tying it to the brush and you just jerk them around and um, yeah it's going to take a little more work to figure out exactly how to do do all of this stuff. The other thing I'm finding that zebrafish do not do is if you've got a dish full of these animals and you take the lid off zebrafish are just going to sit there in the water and they're not going to cause trouble. Spiders immediately all of them go sc scooting out of the dish and try to escape. Uh, the adults as well yeah, so it's kind of a disadvantage to have an animal that isn't necessarily confined. But again, you know, we'll see. I'm just I'm just working with these guys now to see if it's going to be a productive use of my time to explore them a little further. They just kind of bumble around. Look at that guy. He's just, in this in this case, he's on a cotton pad. 
They seem to like that fabric, so he's just crawling around, exploring the place. They seem to get very excited by fibers, which I guess you should not be surprised about with a spider. So he's digging around. I'm currently feeding them uh, wingless Drosophila, which are considerably larger than the baby spiders. But I have been surprised to come in and find dead, dead flies with spiders all over them. So they are able to bring them down. Uh, which kind of makes sense when I looked at the adults, I feed them crickets. And the crickets are much bigger than they are, and yet they have no problem taking them out. Okay, what you see here is he's, this spider is on the edge of the cotton pad and getting very excited. But you're getting some nice side views of him as they crawl out on these long threads. Again, that seems to be, a thread seems to be a spider baby toy. So they're having a good time out there. I will repeat, they're very cute. If you're into spiders. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of what I'm playing with in the lab right now. Having a grand time playing with little bugs, little spiders. We'll see if I can get some better videos as I work on the technique.